The next item of business is a statement by Angela Constance on update on Ministerial Working Group on Building and Fire Safety. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Angela Constance. Up to 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to provide Parliament with an update on the work of the Ministerial Working Group on Building and Fire Safety. I am sure that I speak for everyone in this chamber when I say that our thoughts and deepest sympathy remain with all those affected by the tragic events at Grenfell Tower. Since those events in June, we have taken steps to strengthen building regulations and fire safety in Scotland. The Ministerial Working Group has been focused on three key areas, reassuring the public of the steps we have taken to ensure such a tragedy will not happen in Scotland, establishing the fire safety of high-rise domestic buildings and improving the fire safety and compliance of building standards. Following the Grenfell fire, reassuring the public that our high-rise buildings are safe from fire was absolutely paramount. And I want to record my thanks and highlight the immense work undertaken by the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service in this endeavour. The service has distributed over 60,000 comprehensive fire safety leaflets, carried out around 890 operational assurance visits to high-rise domestic properties and over 1,200 individual home fire safety visits. And these activities gave the public visible and tangible reassurance at a time when the tragic events at Grenfell were understandably uh, causing great anxiety. The Ministerial Group also asked the Fire Service to extend and refresh their multi-storey fire safety campaign uh, launched on the 8th of October. This gives information and advice uh, on what to do if there is a fire in a high-rise building. The campaign promotes fire safety advice about living in high-rise buildings and will run for the remainder of this year. Following the tragic events at Grenfell, it became clear that the aluminium composite material, ACM, used on the tower's cladding system contributed to the rapid spread of fire. And this specific product was first certified for use in 2008 and became the focus for checks across the UK. In Scotland, applications for building warrants for high-rise domestic buildings and building regulations enforced from May 2005 do not permit use of the same type of ACM as that found on Grenfell Tower. The Ministerial Group nonetheless sought to verify whether there were any high-rise domestic buildings in Scotland completely clad in the same type of ACM. Signing officer, I want to be clear about ACM, that the presence of ACM itself does not necessarily mean that a building is defective or dangerous. As the UK government's full-scale fire uh, tests have demonstrated, some grades of ACM used with the right in insulation can mean that an overall cladding system is fire resistant enough to be used on high-rise buildings. It is the type of ACM and the extent of its use that is key in determining fire risk. For these reasons, the ministerial group took a risk-based approach uh, that focused on establishing the presence of ACM cladding on domestic buildings over 18 metres, as well as non-domestic buildings where people might sleep, such as hospitals and care homes, and schools were also prioritised. The nature and scale of this work is resource intensive and I want to express my gratitude uh, to local authorities and others uh, for their responsiveness to our requests uh, which helped establish the extent of the use of ACM. 31 local authorities reported that no public or private domestic high-rise was completely clad in ACM. As members know, Glasgow City Council reported that ACM had been found on private high-rise buildings which were granted building warrants before 2005. Two of these have extensive ACM. The council are working closely with owners to ensure that fire safety measures are upgraded and a long-term solution is agreed. Our request for information from local authorities showed that having a clear nationwide picture of our high-rise building stock would be helpful to inform our future work. 
The group has therefore commissioned a comprehensive inventory of domestic high-rise buildings eh, over 18 metres, which will include construction type and fire safety features. This work is expected to be complete by spring 2018, and we will then consider how it can be maintained in future. The Ministerial Group is determined to do all it can to ensure that the fire safety and building standards expected in the buildings we live in are as strong and effective as they can be. So I want to outline to the Chamber the other steps we have taken. As I said, building regulations relating to the fire safety of cladding systems were strengthened in 2005 to ensure cladding on domestic high-rise buildings must be non-combustible and meet the most stringent fire test at the time. We are not complacent further to the original request for and receipt of information on all high-rise buildings over 18 metres. The group has decided to seek additional reassurance from local authorities with respect to pre-2005 uh, high-rise domestic properties and also non-domestic high-rise buildings uh, with sleeping accommodation. We are doing so to ensure that we have captured information on all relevant building types and that nothing has been missed. In addition, the Ministerial Working Group has commissioned three reviews. The first is a review of building standards relating to fire safety to ensure our regulations are robust and clear. The review chaired by Dr Paul Stollard is already underway. Its scope covers high-rise domestic buildings, including student accommodation and high-rise non-domestic buildings with sleeping accommodation, such as hotels and hospitals. It will focus on standards that cover fire spread on external walls, cavities, spread to and from neighbouring buildings and escape and automatic uh, fire suppression systems. The review will draw upon the expertise of fire and building design specialists from academia and industry and will look beyond Scotland to learn from international best practice. Recommendations for improvement will be shared with a, a global group of experienced building fire safety regulators from the USA, Australia, Netherlands and Austria, ensuring that any required changes reflect the latest expertise uh, from across the world. The second is a review of enforcement and compliance of building standards. Uh, earlier this year, Scottish ministers gave an undertaking that they will consider the findings uh, of the independent inquiry into the construction of Edinburgh schools. This comprehensive review, chaired by Professor John Cole, uh, will examine the roles and responsibilities of everyone involved in all elements of construction from start to finish. It will consider the actions needed before a building warrant is granted and a completion certificate is accepted. It will consider the risk-based approach to reasonable inquiry by local authority verifiers before they accept a completion certificate and the role of certification uh, in the construction journey. Additionally, the review will reflect on any issues identified with wind calculation and installation of external wall insulation, which may require further action. Chairs of such high calibre leading these reviews, uh, alongside the, the wealth of experience uh, on each of the review groups, demonstrates the support that we have to get this right. The recommendations of these reviews it will lead to a consultation starting next spring. The third is a review of Scotland's fire safety regime for high-rise domestic properties to ensure it is fit for purpose and provides comprehensive uh, protection for residents. This review will be led by the Scottish Government and begin this month. It will identify changes required in legislation or practice including whether the roles and responsibilities of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service should be expanded. Together, these three reviews will ensure that we improve our practices and have robust regulations in building standards and fire safety. Beside an officer, the Ministerial Working Group has also developed a comprehensive strategic plan of activity. This includes consulting on consolidated and strengthened fire safety guidance for buildings where people sleep, and on a minimum safe standard for fire and smoke alarms in Scottish homes. Our work also involves close involvement with the ongoing UK review of building standards, ensuring that any key lessons uh, are applied here in Scotland also. 
I hope that this overview of the current work of the Ministerial Working Group can reassure Parliament that the Scottish Government is committed to ensuring that lessons are learned and action taken uh, to make our buildings safe and that as part of this we will continue to keep a watching brief on the UK Grenfell Public Inquiry uh, ready to respond to any new evidence that comes to light. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement, for which I intend to allow around 20 minutes. Um, it would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question could press the request to speak buttons and bear in mind that only if everyone is quite short with questions and answers will all members who wish to get to ask the question. I call Graeme Simpson first, please. Um, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. We welcome the fact that there will be reviews into building standards, enforcement and compliance of those standards and the fire safety regime. The Local Government and Communities Committee has already looked at these areas and come up with comprehensive recommendations which would improve building regulation and standards. The reviews announced today duplicate work that has already been done. So firstly, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm if she's minded to accept any of the committee's recommendations? Secondly, the Cabinet Secretary mentioned cladding in her statement. She told this Parliament on September the 21st that the Government was informed on September the 5th that some flats in Glasgow may have ACM cladding, but we have email evidence that suggests the Government knew three weeks earlier than that. Can Angela Constance confirm exactly when government officials and ministers were told about that cladding? Angela Constance. Mr. Officer, I thank uh, Mr. Simpson for his question and indeed his welcome uh, of the uh, various reviews and work that the Ministerial Working Group has either commenced or indeed is taken forward. I would dispute that our work uh, duplicates the Local Government Committee review. I think it is fair to say that there will at times be overlaps. Uh, we very much welcome uh, the work, that the diligent hard work undertaken by uh, committed, um, and we will be given a fulsome response to the committee's work um, in due course. And of course, there's a debate on the committee's work um, in the very near future. And without preempting any of that, uh, I'm quite sure we will indeed uh, be uh, mindful and accepting uh, of the, the recommendations uh, or some of the recommendations made by committee we will of course uh, have to give all matters uh, careful consideration and it would be wrong of me to uh, preempt our close scrutiny of the committee's work uh, here in the few minutes uh, that I have. In terms of cladding, uh, he raises issues uh, about uh, verification. Um, we uh, have um, you know, we've been transparent about the work that we are leading in the Ministerial uh, Working Group. Uh, we are always happy to provide uh, further detail. I think it is important uh, to stress that um, over uh, the past few months, uh, we have uh, received uh, and do receive information from concerned people, uh, whether that's building owners or local authorities, and we have, uh, on results of those information, have had to dig deeper to clarify at times what that information is said. So I don't, I don't, um, I don't accept Mr. Simpson's uh, uh, characterisation of how he has presented uh, the facts around Glasgow. I think, as I've said in chamber previously, uh, presiding officer, uh, that there has been intensive engagement between officials uh, and Glasgow uh, City Council officials uh, to clarify what the issues are and the nature of those issues and to get really specific information because it is imperative uh, that when we uh, come to our feet uh, with information that that information uh, is indeed accurate. Pauline McNeill. Thank you. <clears throat> Does the Minister agree that it is the Scottish Government's duty to give confidence to the public that all our buildings will be or will achieve the correct standard of fire safety, regardless of being in the public or the private sector, so that all residents and tenants have equal protection? Is the Minister fully aware that some ACM cladding is present in both towers in Glasgow Harbour and that this was signed off in 2005-2006? And therefore, I hope she would agree that this would warrant some questions in itself. 
But does the Minister think that it's fair, therefore, that those residents in Glasgow Harbour are being charged for the use of fire warden patrols? Surely residents should not pay the price of this poor decision. And finally, would the Minister consider, uh, and I'd like to thank the working group for all the work they've done so far, but would you consider the inclusion of the Fire Brigade Union on the expert working group as an added voice to the table of experts? Angela Constance. Uh, President Officer, again, I thank Pauline uh, McNeill uh, for her uh, question. This government does indeed have a duty to ensure that we have the very best of standards uh, and indeed that those standards uh, are put into uh, practice. Uh, there are many uh, issues that this parliament is aware of in terms of uh, the, the buildings that she cites in Glasgow, uh, also in terms of the Edinburgh Schools uh, inquiry uh, that has uh, raised a number of very detailed questions uh, about you know, building standards and regulations stating uh, one thing and perhaps you know other things uh, happening uh, in practice and that's why uh, we have uh, taken uh, the move uh, not just in response to Grenfell but also in terms of uh, the Edinburgh Schools um, inquiry to commission a review into enforcement uh, and compliance. It is important to stress that others, other than government, not to demure from government's responsibilities, uh, but others, whether that's uh, local government uh, or indeed building owners uh, or indeed the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, also have very clear uh, roles and responsibilities. And part of the work in relation to the fire-related building standards uh, and indeed you know, the regulatory framework in the high-rise uh, domestic buildings and that broader work about enforcement and compliance is to ensure uh, that everybody has the correct uh, roles and responsibilities uh, going forward. With regards to the point about the FBU, um, it's a, a ministerial working group. It is an internal uh, ministerial working group that I chair, uh, that I am ably assisted by uh, Ms Hewn uh, and Mr Stewart. So it is an internal ministerial working group that we're working very hard uh, to be informative, to be transparent uh, and to be helpful uh, in terms of uh, enabling people to uh, be informed and access uh, the work that we are doing. We are, of course, uh, outward looking. Uh, as ministers, we're always happy to um, engage separately with the FBU uh, or indeed industry experts uh, or anyone who has an interest uh, to uh, engage uh, and help us you know, on this important uh, journey that we're on. And in terms of the Glasgow situation, um, you know, I, I accept that, that residents uh, and building owners are finding themselves in a, a very, very uh, difficult situation, uh, not uh, you know, of, of their making. Uh, it is, of course, not the norm for government to provide um, you know, financial assistance of the nature that I think uh, Ms McNeill is touching upon, you know, direct uh, to homeowners. Um, it is important that Glasgow City Council, uh, in its work uh, with the factors and the residents, it uh, comes to a clear understanding uh, quickly in the vast city building to do some work uh, in, in and around this to help scope out you know, what work is required in terms of a longer term solution that will uh, obviously give a view uh, about overall costs. Um, but it is important, it's imperative in terms of dealing with the situation here and now that interim safety measures were put in place uh, to keep residents safe in their homes. Uh, can I ask Cabinet Secretary, whilst knowing that you, you do want to be very, very thorough on such an important subject, can maybe have shortened answers, please, allow everyone to get in. And could questioners bear that in mind too for questions? Claire Adamson, followed by Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement and welcome the three review streams detailed in it. Uh, but can I seek assurance that the Scottish Government will be able to respond timidly and effectively to any matters that may yet arise as a consequence of either of its review streams or from the public inquiry into Grenfell Tower? Angela Constance. Um, yes, President Officer, that's the, the, the short answer uh, to that. We established the Ministerial Working Group very quickly uh, after the tragic events at Grenfell. It has met uh, for uh, seven times. We are working hard to engage uh, with colleagues uh, in the UK government uh, and uh, devolved administrations. We're keeping a close eye uh, on the uh, Dame Judith Hackett review of building standards south of the border. And indeed, both Mr Stewart and I uh, have engaged uh, with Judith Hackett uh, on that. Uh, we will continue to monitor uh, the public inquiry uh, around Grenfell and the, the, the remit 
um, of the working group uh, is, of course, to deal with any other matters uh, as are pertinent and desired. Alexander Stewart, followed by Bob Doris. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I note from the statement that you wish to seek additional reassurances from local authorities with respect to pre-2005 high-rise domestic properties and non-domestic high-rise buildings with sleeping accommodation. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what measures are being taken to achieve these reassurances and what they are? Angela Constance. Again, uh, thank Mr Stewart uh, for that question. Uh, in essence, we want to go back to local authorities. Uh, we are currently in the midst of drafting uh, correspondence. Uh, we want to take a belt and braces approach. Uh, we want to dig deep. Um, we are conscious that this is a somewhat complex area. I'm conscious that uh, buildings that were built to be, for example, student accommodation uh, are perhaps now occupied uh, as more uh, traditional residential homes. And I want to be assured, and I'm sure Chamber wants to be assured, that we are capturing all necessary uh, relevant information. And in terms of a risk-based approach, it's entirely appropriate that we also take a look at um, high-rise flats uh, that are not considered domestic, but where people sleep in at night. Uh, and we'll keep uh, Mr Stewart and others informed about the nature of those inquiries and the detail of the requests that we make to our partners in local government. Bob Doris, followed by David Stewart. The presiding officer, the local government committee has indeed uh, had an inquiry into this area. And hopefully the Scottish government will be in a position to respond formally to that, that report ahead of next week's debate. But one conclusion uh, within our inquiry report was there should be a national high-rise inventory uh, with regards to fire safety, that it should be regularly updated, that it should be speedily accessible, and that potentially it should carry additional information. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, given the Scottish Government is now seeking additional information and reassurances from councils, does that not strengthen that the, the Scottish Government should, expect, uh, should accept that very specific recommendation? Angela Constance. Well, if I could say to Mr Doris, it is uh, certainly um, uh, making the prospects of that specific recommendation uh, that committee makes uh, being you know, accepted and endorsed by uh, the government. As I said, I don't think it's appropriate you know, prior to the debate or indeed Mr Stewart's formal response uh, to uh, the committee for me to be speaking too much about that, given that the focus uh, here today is on the work of the ministerial uh, working group. But the important point uh, is that the, the building inventory will give us that overview of the types of domestic high-rise buildings, their construction, uh, the existing uh, fire safety measures, and to understand how improvements could be made, and that of course includes issues around retrofit uh, sprinklers. And also, I think, crucially, and I've heard Mr Doris speak about this point before, about how once we gather information, how we actually keep that information uh, up to date uh, and, and relevant and pertinent. David Stewart, followed by Andy Whiteman. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be well aware that in Scotland there has been no multi-fire deaths where working sprinklers have been in operation. Will the Stollard Review address the issue of retrofitting of sprinklers in high-rise domestic properties? Angela Constance. Uh, thanks again to uh, Mr Stewart. We are uh, watching his proposals uh, around his plans for a member's bill uh, very closely and I've had the opportunity to, to meet Mr Stewart and discuss those uh, matters. I think, as I said in my earlier reply, with respect to the work we're doing around the inventory on high-rise buildings, that will give us a clear picture of the condition of those buildings and what is physically and technically uh, possible uh, within those buildings. Um, I know Mr Stewart has a very uh, keen uh, interest in this area, uh, but it's not just our work around the inventory that will also be helpful in terms of uh, our future decisions uh, and future works. Uh, the work in relation to uh, the fire-related building standards is important in this uh, regard, uh, as is our consultation on smoke and fire alarms. There's a number of questions uh, that touch upon wider uh, fire safety issues. And there's also research, joint research, by Bree and the, the Fire Industry Association that was commissioned uh, by the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service that will be looking at in due course uh, as well. Andy Whiteman followed by Sandra White. Uh, thank you and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance copy of her statement. Uh, on the 27th of September 2017, the Minister Kevin Stewart um, at the Local Government Communities Committee 
told us that the remit of the Stollard and the John Cole review uh, had not yet been agreed. I'm not aware if they've been published yet. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm whether they have in fact been published and if not, when they will be? Angela Constance. Uh, President Officer, we'll attend to that matter uh, imminently if it's not been addressed. We want to uh, share that information uh, with committee and all members who have an interest. So we'll give an undertaking to do that as soon as possible. Sandra White, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, the two buildings that's mentioned before in Glasgow are indeed in the Glasgow Harbour site in my constituency, and indeed evidence received from constituents. State completion certificates were received after May 2005. Can I therefore ask uh, the Cabinet Secretary what evidence the working group has received from Glasgow City Council that they are doing everything in their power to enable residents are kept informed of everything that is going on and uh, the ongoing work and are told where they can access further advice. Angela Constance. Uh, officer, the issue uh, in and around uh, completion certificates is one of the uh, many issues that the review on building standards uh, in terms of compliance and enforcement uh, will of course be looking at in further uh, details. Um, in terms of the work uh, that is ongoing uh, at a local level, uh, Glasgow City Council have been keeping the Ministerial Working Group uh, updated on a regular basis. Uh, they uh, remain proactive on addressing the situation with the two towers uh, that Ms White uh, refers to. Uh, I know that the Council has written to property owners uh, detailing the actions that they have taken to, to date. That includes the, the interim measures to improve fire safety of the buildings, as I mentioned earlier, to allow residents to uh, continue uh, to be uh, living at home. And there is the work uh, that will need to be done to uh, remove uh, and replace uh, the cladding. And if that doesn't capture everything that the constituency member um, requires, we'll endeavour to write to her in the fullest uh, of detail. Liam MacArthur, followed by Maurice Corey. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of her statement and indeed the details of the three reviews. But given the ongoing review taking place within the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and the service's existing well-publicised resource pressures, can the Cabinet Secretary give the Chamber any indication of what expanded roles and responsibilities uh, are being considered for the service as part of the review of fire safety regime? And can she also assure Parliament uh, that any expanded roles will be properly funded? Angela Constance. So, you know, so I don't want to uh, pre-empt the work uh, where international experts uh, are you know, paying very close attention uh, to all of these uh, matters. Uh, members will be aware that there is a difference uh, in uh, fire, legis fire safety legislation in Scotland as there are in England, and that sparked off a bit of a debate uh, around uh, the expansion or not of particular rules uh, and uh, re responsibilities. Uh, and of course, you know, when making decisions, we have to be fully cognizant of the resource implications uh, of any such uh, decisions. I should, of course, also, presiding officer, you know, remind uh, members that in terms of this year's operational budget it has actually increased for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service by over uh, 21 uh, million pounds and I think it's also important uh, to stress that the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service uh, have really really stepped up to the plate and since Grenfell you know they have undertaken over 1200 uh, home visits uh, nearly 500 of those home visits have been in Glasgow uh, and they have also undertaken nearly 900 operational and intelligence uh, visits again to assure themselves that they know the layout of buildings but also to be that visible reassurance uh, to residents. Maurice Corey followed by John Mason. Thank you Deputy Signing Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm what will be the full extent and remit of this and scope of the review for the high-rise um, domestic properties? Angela Constance. Um, I'm not sure that I understand which specific uh, review that Mr Corey um, is um, re referring to. Uh, as I said earlier, we've got three reviews um, ongoing. Um, in terms of the building standards uh, review around uh, compliance and enforcement, in terms of the uh, building standards review on uh, fire-related safety standards, uh, as I said to Mr Whiteman, we'll ensure uh, that that remit uh, is published. Uh, there is also a look at the regulatory framework 
that is far more about the day-to-day -day operations of domestic high-rise buildings. And we've taken a very broad de definition of what a high-rise building is, uh, including uh, over two storeys, because we want to be able to capture um, the uh, t tenements, for example. So uh, we're taking a broad brush uh, approach to ensure that we capture different types of buildings that we would understand in common sense to be high-rise that are perhaps not that 18 metres uh, or uh, above. And the, the, the review of the regulatory framework is also important in terms of the work that we do around the roles and responsibilities of the Scottish fire sector and other major players in fire safety. John Mason. Thank you. Uh, concerning the comprehensive inventory of domestic high-rise buildings, which the Cabinet Secretary referred to in her statement, uh, can she clarify, is that just uh, amalg pulling together figures that councils already have, or is somebody else going out to Glasgow and Edinburgh and elsewhere and doing an assessment uh, from scratch? Angela Cotton. Uh, what we're actually doing, Mr Mason, is we have procured the work uh, for the inventory, uh, so people will be able to tender for that work, uh, and we hope that that work will be completed uh, by next spring, uh, and that, uh, if you like, will be a fresh pair of eyes uh, in terms of uh, you know, the condition of uh, domestic high-rise buildings in, in, in Scotland. Uh, and in that regard, uh, again, it's about cross-checking uh, information, ensuring we've no gaps and we have that detailed uh, knowledge of the conditions in and around fire safety and other matters for domestic high-rise buildings in Scotland. And a last very quick question please from Mr Finlay. Neil Finlay. If there's to be an expansion of the role, uh, roles and responsibilities of the fire and rescue services how will these be fulfilled uh, on a reduced budget and with fewer personnel? Angela Constance. Uh, well, of course, President Officer, I think I answered that uh, question uh, earlier. Uh, if we deal with the, the, the here and now, the operational budget of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service this year uh, has actually increased. We are not uh, prejudging uh, any of the outcomes of these reviews that are led by eminent international experts. Uh, there may or may not be an expansion uh, of roles, but we will indeed uh, be keeping uh, members fully informed of all deliberations that will be taken uh, in the interests of building safety and the, the residents of Scotland. That concludes questions on the Cabinet Secretary's statement. I'll give a couple of moments and we'll move on to the next item of business.